Hey guys, what's going on? It's Typical Wrestling here, and we are back for another episode of Monday Night Raw. We're at 25,000 in front of Bridgeport Stadium. And for our dark match, we have the Young Bucks taking on the Seabrook's Perfection, with the Young Bucks picking up the win about 556 with a more bang for your buck via Matt Jackson. So the Young Bucks doing pretty good, uh, pretty good on the main roster ever since. And uh, yeah, so we have the first segment of the show in which we have Triple H, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and Stephanie McMahon. They open the show. Uh, we start, well, actually, we start the show with a replay of John Cena's heinous attack from uh, the board of directors from last week on SmackDown. We open up with, you know, Triple H, Stephanie, and Austin. Triple H says that as of right now, the board of directors, all of them, are both in states of shock and physical recovery following the attack. Triple H also says that he had talked to the entire board, and they have, from the comforts of hospitals and their homes, have voted him unanimously the new CEO of WWE. Stephanie has stepped up to become CEO of the company as well, and they both thank Steve Austin for allowing them to use the Raw as like a traveling home base instead of regular Titan Towers in case of any more John Cena attacks. Triple H and Stephanie leave, and Steve Austin begins to talk. He says that he's glad to have the tag team titles back on Raw's side of things after they won them on SmackDown in the rematch, and we'll have to find a team, and SmackDown will have to find a team to challenge for those titles at bragging rights. We're out, the Kings of Wrestling were supposed to, but now they will have to face another team from SmackDown instead. He apologized to the Kings of Wrestling, but he did not actually expect you know to lose that you know match. And as for Raw's main event tonight, Randy Orton, Brock Lesnar, and Wade Barrett, after all kind of, you know, vying for each other's control, will take on each other to officially crown Team Raw's captain for bragging rights. We also have an announcement. The first match of the show will see the big show take on our truth for his United States Championship with Yujiro Takahashi providing quote-unquote commentary, but he's really just sitting there, you know, kind of observing the match. And in an 82B, and about to head good wrestling, good heat and decent wrestling, the Big Show defeated R-Truth in about 60 minutes via a choke slam following interference from Kane. The Big Show makes defense number one of his United States Championship. So, you know, R-Truth tried, but, you know, the Big Show obviously was stronger and retained in the first defense of his United States Championship. And the Big Show, all of a sudden, Kane grabs Yujiro Takahashi from the commentary booth, throws him into the ring. It looks like they're going to try and beat up Yujiro Takahashi again. But, you know, Mao and, the, and his various other, I guess you could call them minions, I guess. His various other animal, scantily clad women minions. They form like a human shield around Yujiro Takahashi. So Kane and the Big Show can't really do anything about it. And they get mad and they leave all pissed off. So I thought that'd be a funny segment to have. On the cutback, we see The Miz. He's seen smirking as he strolls into an office space, which, as the door opens, is seen to be Triple H's office, the CEO's office. The Miz is brief, and he says he wants to cash in his WWE title match, which he earned at SummerSlam tonight. Triple H sighs, and he informs him that not only is the main event of Raw already booked, and a pretty good booked one at that, while Triple H is at it, but tonight is not the time or place for a huge, high caliber match of that nature. Triple H knows what he's doing. Just because a couple months ago, Triple H gave The Miz some career advice. He wants him to take The Miz under his wing. Maybe in a past life he would have done it. But it reminds The Miz that he's CEO now, and he has a lot more responsibilities on the table. But he, he can give Miz a match tonight. I guess Evan Bourne, one-on-one. -on -one. The, lives, the Miz leaves obviously disappointed, but not entirely angry. You figure he kind of would have been more angry, but you know he seems to be... You know, a little less angry about the whole thing. And in a decent match, Chris Jericho takes on Seth Rollins with the shield with the other members lurking at ringside. And despite the distractions, Chris Jericho, the veteran, picks up the win against Seth Rollins via a lion salt. And he's able to roll out before the shield can do any more damage to him. So yeah, the Chris Jericho and the shield's kind of war of words really starting to heat up in the moment with Chris Jericho taking on the first member of the shield right there. And about the head support wrestling a little heat. 
Uh, what did I set this as? Oh, you know what? That's just me. I messed up on the booking of this match. AJ Lee, Madison Eagles, and Sarah Del Rey take on the Coven, and the Coven actually managed to pick up the win after Madison Lane was able to distract AJ Lee enough so that Astroduna could hit Sarah Del Rey with a foreign object to pick up the win. And after that, AJ Lee, Madison Lane, they brawl all the way to the outside. You know, pretty much just a standard brawl segment, you know, going off of that. And we see Saban and Shelly come out. They are supposed to, dang it, I forgot the picture. They're, they, have, they have their WWE Tag Team titles. Uh, so they have the tag titles. And they go up to Steve Austin. And they're straight up, you know, gloating. They're like, hey, Austin, we heard what you said. You know, we're totally happy to represent Raw on Monday Night Raw. We know you love us. You know, who doesn't love the Motor City Machines? But Steve Austin straight up is like, yeah, you know, I, I like that Raw has the tag team titles, but I don't like you guys. And as soon as bragging rights is over, I hope a, a suitable team is able to get them out. Whether from SmackDown or Raw, we hope that whichever team, he goes, you know, bragging rights, you're representing Raw, Good, gonna hope you win. After that, nah, you suck. So Austin lays down the line and pisses off the Motor City Machines for being cocky assholes. And in a 93A match, which is a really good match, about to have great heat, decent reaction from the crowd, the, C CM Punk takes on Sami Zayn, which despite John Morrison's music flailing up from the bit and then fading back, uh, is able, Sami Zayn, uh, Sami Zayn still falls to the Anaconda Vice, letting CM Punk pick up the win. But overall, really good match, you know, kind of, I'm really glad how, you know, kind of like these guys have, it's surprising, like, you know, sometimes you don't play long enough, like more than a year in a TW game, but, you know, once you build up people, like, to see Sami Zayn going from, like, you know, like 30, 30 like, 39s and like 45s or whatever they started out as. I, I think he started on like the 45 range. Going to 81s and having 93 A, a matches with CM Punk is obviously, you know, pretty happy. Makes me happy. And in a good heat and distant wrestling, you know, not as a good a match, but you know, could, you know, maybe with a storyline, but I felt like taking the storyline out, just having a regular match. The Miz defeats Evan Bourne in 17 minutes via pinfall with the scrawl crushing finale. So Evan Bourne puts in a good effort, but the number one contender manages to pull away with the even bigger win. Kofi says, you know, all of a sudden, uh, on the Titan Tron, Kofi Kingston comes out. You know, and Kofi King says, you know, I'm nursing some, he's not injured, he's just nursing some, you know, kind of rehabbing a little bit. That's why, unfortunately, he's not on Monday Night Raw. The WWE doctors ordered him after his big old match he had with Brock Lesnar two, week, two days in a row. But he says that he saw what The Miz tried to do, and he felt he should call in and tell The Miz that he's ready to take on The Miz anytime, any place for the WWE Championship. And The Miz kind of nods along with it. Doesn't seem too phased. Not really mind games, but just Kofi Kingston telling The Miz that, you know, Miz wants to step up, he, Kofi will step up anytime. And, uh, oh, they were supposed to be on screen. Uh, but Triple H is seen. He's talking to, he's on the phone to somebody, probably some corporate thing. When Steve Austin comes in, the sheriff of Raw, GM of Raw, sees this, takes the phone, throws it right out of Triple H's hands and onto the wall and smashes it. Stunned Triple H is like, can I, can I help you with something? And Steve Austin asks, t talks tri about Triple H about Triple H. You know, he booked the Miz in a match and he says, don't do that again. Don't, don't book shit on my, this is my show. I'm, I'm the GM. Don't do that. And he just walks away. And then we have a short segment in which Bray Wyatt is talking to Daniel Bryan via the screen, the big, and he says, simply says this is not over just because he lost at SummerSlam. Bray Wyatt is determined to get his revenge on Daniel Bryan. No matter how good of a wrestler he is, he will still have you know, to face his fears and all that spooky Bray Wyatt shit that was from 2013. And in a 91A, in a superb match, Randy Orton, Brock Lesnar, Wade Barrett go at it, with Randy Orton picking up the win after hitting Wade Barrett with an RKO to officially be named Team Bra's representative at Bragging Rights. And Brock Lesnar takes this pretty good, just kidding. He picks up Randy Orton and beats the living shit out of him. He also decides to beat up Wade Barrett, paw him, and tries to stop him, but he's no match. And it looks like Brock Lesnar has really put, you know, Team Raw's chances of survival in jeopardy by attacking its team leader. And that's how Raw ends the show.
with a 94A. Uh, overall, yeah, I like this Raw. You know, booking it was pretty fun. Uh, I don't know why I keep saying that. That's one of the habits I hate that I'm like, oh, yeah, I liked booking this Raw. Uh, so besides me being stupid, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the episode as we continue to build the Bragging Rats, and I'll see you guys for SmackDown.